rival UC Santa Barbara in their conference opener on Wednesday. The Mustangs taking on the CSU Northridge Matadors tonight. You're watching Mustang Game Day. I'm Sydney Finkel. And I'm Sam Spitz. Welcome to our first Mustang Game Day for the men's basketball team. We've got a great show for you today. We've got head coach John Smith coming on, as well as a few other guests. Capaldi has got a tough matchup tonight against CSUN. First, we're going to take a look back at the Mustang season so far. Season with two road games, losing both games first to Santa Clara and then to North Dakota State. The Mustangs were then able to pick up their first win in their home opener here inside Mall Athletic Center against Simpson College. After a five game losing streak and attending the Las Vegas Invitational Tournament, the Mustangs brought it back home again with a four point win against Siena, which still to this day marks their only Division I victory. Yeah, some tough competition continued as they lost to San Diego State over the holidays who is still currently undefeated at 16-0. Cal Poly's third win came over after Vanguard last Friday at home. Then the Mustangs kicked off conference play this week, taking on rival UC Santa Barbara, but falling 63-45. to Now what's interesting is Cal Poly had the 33rd toughest non-conference schedule of 353 NCAA D1 schools and the second highest in the Big West behind Long Beach State at 23rd with just five games at home. Now CSUN is coming into this 1-0 after beating Long Beach State on Wednesday. Right, and another interesting aspect about the beginning of this season for the Mustangs is they are actually playing under a first-year head coach in John Smith from Fullerton. And when John Smith came over from Fullerton, he also brought his son with him, graduate guard Jamal Smith, as well as Keith Smith, who's actually a redshirt for the Mustangs, who's now eligible to play. They're the only father, son, and nephew on the same Division I team. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from the Mustangs game against the Gauchos on Wednesday. Last Wednesday, Cal Poly took on their coastal rivals, UC Santa Barbara, in their Big West opener. The Mustangs starting off with Jamal Smith breaking ankles and sinking the shot. A pair of three-pointers from Nagel and McLaughlin pushed the Gauchos' lead to eight with 12 minutes in the half. Colby Rogers took it upon himself, making two three-pointers and adding a free throw on top, with the Mustangs down 21-16. In the final minute, Rogers strings another three-pointer, putting the Mustangs down 28-36 going into the half. The second half opened with back-and-forth shooting until McLaughlin sank a three, with 16.09 left and put the Mustangs into a double-digit hole they wouldn't be able to climb out of. Nolan Taylor in his first game back for the Mustangs, fighting his way through the paint, putting up his first points of the season. And Joe Alexander putting on a show in the paint, bringing the score to 50 to 42 in a three-point play. And finally, Colby Rogers closing out the night, sinking a three-pointer, but ultimately the Mustangs dropping to the Gauchos, 45 to 63. Disappointed. Um, you know we didn't shoot the ball the way that we wanted to. Um, Defensively, we had we had some goals that we we met tonight, but offensively we got to put it together a little bit better. We just got to get better offensively. The Big West is tough. Uh, we got to bring it every night. Um, and we just got to keep fighting. We got to stay in the fight. We got to keep grinding because it's going to be a tough conference, and we just got to keep going at it. it. Just starts with practice tomorrow. Um, come in, try and have a good one, um, and just prepare. It's all about preparation. Um, just mentality, basically. Um, getting the guys through, you know, practice and everything. So, I think it's going to start tomorrow. You have to. It's it's conference. You know, you, you just have to have the mentality that you, you're, you're not going to lose two games in a row, especially at home. All right, don't go anywhere. After the break, we have what's new with the Mustangs this season. It is a great pleasure for me to announce our new head football coach at Cal Poly is Bo Baldwin. <laughs> One of the biggest things for me is I want to develop that team socially. I want to develop those young men so they feel like when they're 23 years old, they are a different person than they were, were when they were 18 years old. And then when I talk to them 10, 15 years down the line and they come back and they're on the sideline for games, that they remember their time here and not just their win-loss record, but how they grew as people. And guess what? I promise you, the winning and the consistency with winning I'm more proud about doing something over time than making one run. I want to do something over time. We will do something over time. We will focus on what we need to do day to day, 
But make no means about it. We're pushing for a five, ten year vision to be a, the premier team in this conference and compete nationally. I get excited as I'm up here talking about it with you guys just because it is. It's, uh, it's, I'm very humbled to be here. Um, and again, it's one of those things where I just want to thank everyone involved one more time. I can't wait. I'm already going, but I can't wait to really get going with the guys when they come back. What kind of football team are we going to see? Offensive, defensively, much has been made about Cal Poly famously running triple option for so many years. The foundation is in such a great place that, yes, there'll be schematic things that change. There's no doubt about it. Schematically, there'll be certain things that we get into defensively that'll definitely, you know, be a little bit different. And there'll be, you know, most likely you'll see a 180 on offense. You will, you know, because it's what I believe. It doesn't mean it'll be a 180 in terms of the philosophy and how they play, you know, because I have so much respect for that. But the style, yes, it'll be more in the, in the mold of a multiple offense. We're going to go ahead and take a, take a look at what's new on, for the Mustang this season after graduating three players last year in Donovan Fields, Kuba Nijel, and Marcellus Garrick. They are welcoming eight new players, four who are new to the program, and four who are redshirts. And now taking a look at who's new in town. Up first, we have our graduate transfers, Malik Carwell from Boise State and Jamal Smith from Cal Poly Fullerton. Then we have our two freshmen on the team this season, Colby Rogers and Lee Karoma. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the red shirts this season. We are missing one from the graphic, and that is Colin McCarthy, but he is also eligible to play this season. We have redshirt junior Keith Smith, redshirt freshman Kyle Colvin, and another redshirt junior in Nolan Taylor. Mustang News has started to create a new documentary called Rebuild, where we actually take an inside look at the rebuilding process for the Mustangs under first-year head coach John Smith. We have a short clip from one of the episodes. Let's take a look. So uh, the recruiting process was, you know, pretty pretty simple and easy. Um, you know, my father is obviously the coach, so as soon as he got the job, my decision was made. I think the impact we bring is, is just that, you know, we've experienced winning a championship and what it takes to win a championship. You know, we've both been around the game for so long. I think that that bleeds into to the rest of the guys and the rest of the coaching staff as well. We always help Sarah put the materials back where they, we got them from, and the last one was the sled was waiting 100 yards away from where it was supposed to be. So I just started pushing it a little bit, and then they started encouraging me to go the whole 100 yards, so I did. You're not even close, dog. You're not even close. I should not have tried that, but uh, hey, if they can do it, I want them to see if the leader can do it too. I'm not going to be able to work tomorrow. That's going to work. You know, seeing your coach going through the same stuff that, that you're going through and, and, and him understanding the type, of, the type of pain and the effort that you've been putting in, like, it, 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 gets, our, it gets our group excited. You know, uh, it, it allows us to just to follow him and, and, and do whatever he asks. And we'll run through a wall for him, you know. good to get outside of Mott and uh, do some different things and, and stretch them a little bit. That's what it's about. You know, you get outside of your element and see how, how hard you can compete outside of your element through adversity. We'll have another clip from the Rebuild series later on in the show. But for now, if you want to find our full episodes, you can go to mustangnews.net. And now we have with us on set Cal Poly men's basketball head coach, John Smith. Coach, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, ladies, for having me. I will say you look a lot happier being here on set and not pushing that sled at 6 a.m. <laughs> Tell me about it. That was brutal. <laughs> so first question here, um, just kind of generic. It is with, under, um, with 15 games under your belt now as the head coach of this team, what are kind of your like, initial responses to living here in slow and coaching this team? 
uh, living here in Slow has been great. You know, um, this is the the best coast. I call it the Central Coast is the best coast. You know, um, it's a great place to be. Um, the community's great, and and that's one of the things that. <clears throat> that I've been disappointed with with myself and what's been going on in the first 15 games is that we're working so hard to put a great product on the floor for the community. And, and you know, some things have transpired that this has kept us from, from doing that right right away from a record standpoint. But we're working hard to, to continue to build this, rebuild, like you said, and the process of uh, putting a, a championship team on the floor. And it's, it's, it's closer than what people think. And coach, you have your son on the team, Jamal. What's it like, your relationship, balancing that player to coach, father to son? It's been great. You know, there's there's times for both of us where we're able to be there for each other during struggling times. Um, you know, for me, I don't like to lose, and, and he could see that it was wearing on me uh, these last couple of weeks. So he came over to my house and sat down, had a, a talk with me, and it, it kind of – calm my nerves and, and got me back in perspective of what what it's really about and that's a that's the greatest thing of having him on on the team with me is i'm able to be there for him in times like that and he's able to be there for me in times like that where i didn't have that with my father so it's 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 exciting so what are some of the major adjustments that you've had to make maybe not quite the record you were hoping for in non-conference play so as it started to progress what are kind of some of the major adjustments you've made out there on the court well, you know, we've been, it's been a constant adjustment because of the injuries, you know. Um, we didn't have Nolan for the first 14 games, and he finally came back. Um, and, you know, just we've had some illnesses. So we're just trying to adjust how we're trying to attack teams with the pieces that we have now in place. Um, so you guys are getting, still getting used to that. Um, you know, trying to play with a faster pace is, is something that we're, we're trying to still try to get accustomed to. So... But like I said in the beginning, it's a process and it's a learning curve and, and you know, hopefully the learning curve is shorter now that we have everybody healthy. So and talking about injuries, Hank Hollingsworth suffering a season ending injury. Um, the guy with the most experience on this team and one of very few bigs on the team. So after his injury, how have you seen Ali kind of step up of one of now only like two bigs on the team? Yeah, that's that's been the silver lining of everything that's happened that with uh, the injuries, you know, dealing with adversity. You know, someone next man up mentality takes place, and and Ali and Kyle Colvin, as well as as uh, Kobe Rogers, have stepped up and and been thrust into the into the forefront earlier than normal. And you know they're they're doing they're doing better than what I expected as freshmen. You know, so that's been a, a good thing for us. But you know, yeah, we miss we solely miss Hanks. Um, you know, defense ability. Um, we, we missed Nolan's offense ability, so now we got Nolan back. We, we're still going to miss Hank, so someone else has to step up, and Ollie's doing a pretty good job with that. And then, Coach, talking about the consistency on the team, for example, Cal Colvin had 18 points against Vanguard, and then UC Santa Barbara didn't have any points. How do you kind of work to instill a type of consistency with the players? Well, what's happening with a lot of the players, like freshmen like that, there's not a lot of footage on them, and as he – plays more and more games, teams start taking away his first option. And you, young players struggle getting to that second option. So what we've tried to do is try and get him to watch film with us and, and show him to conceptualize, see things two and three steps ahead of time. So, so they'll, he'll know that people are running him off the three-point line, just get to his mid-range game. So we've been working on that with him, and I see he's going he's gonna to do fine in the future. And kind of a player you mentioned um, just a bit earlier, Colby Rogers, one of the freshmen on the team, with um, a team high 16 points against Santa Barbara. What has he been bringing to this team's offense? Colby is a great outside shooter, a great scorer, but he's more mature than what a freshman is, you know. And I think a lot of that has to do with he's from Atlanta, Georgia, but he went to high school in New Jersey after his second year in high school. So he's used to being away from home. It's forced him to grow up earlier. But he has a, a, a old man's type game. You know, he, he, he's never sped up, but he, he's a great shooter. Um, so if he gets his opportunities, you know, he has a great chance of making those because he's, his preparation, as you can tell behind us, he's working on it right now. And Coach, looking at this matchup against CSUN today, what are you expecting from the game? Well, CSUN, you know, makes it hard for you. They're, they're great in transition, great on offensive boards, and they have two unbelievable scores um, in – Gomez and Dine, and so we have to try and slow those guys down and try and slow them down in transition, but at the same time, put you right back at them. So looking forward to that challenge. 
And after the loss to Santa Barbara on Wednesday uh, for the conference opener, what was kind of the locker room talk after that game? And I know you guys talk about short-term memory a lot, you know, kind of forgetting those losses. But what was your kind of memo going into this game against CSUN? Well, we just tried to figure out the reasons why, um, you know, we, we were so tense offensively. We did a great job defensively against Santa Barbara, you know, holding them to 63 points, one of the top scoring teams, but we only scored 45 points. We, l we missed 12 shots from two feet away. So, you know, you make those 12 shots, that's an extra 24 points, and we win that game by four, you know, or four or five. So we just tried to, you know, show those things on film and, and get guys to relax and, and try and get them in better spots to make those every time. And what's the kind of relationship between you and the other coaches? And how have, what's kind of like the vibe around the coaching staff right now? We're going to have Coach Hanson on in about 10 minutes on the show to talk about the same thing. But you brought in a lot of new coaches. And how have you guys been kind of working together in non-conference? You know, it's, it's always a work in progress when you're new. You know, we've never worked together before, but we've known each other, you know, through this business with the exception of uh, Coach Hanson. But Coach Hanson's been a, a, a mainstay because of his ability. You know, he's played here. He's coached here. Uh, but our relationship is great. You know, they, they really help me with game prep and everything. So I'm fortunate to have that type of staff. Well, Coach, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate having you on the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with more Mustang Game Day. ITP 467, or Applied Business and Production Management, integrates manufacturing business and production systems experience. Professor Jim Bentley explains an overview of this capstone course. Come up with a product develop the product, develop a marketing plan, develop the manufacturing plan, make them sell more units than they can sell to friends and family, and get it all done in 10 weeks. The class is broken into three groups of roughly 12 students, each with their own innovative product, Urban Garden, Hitch Locker, and A La Carte. Each group is responsible for financing the product as well as dedicating roughly 30 to 40 hours in the lab per week. Professor Bentley discusses the challenges students face throughout the quarter. Time management. Uh, maintaining relationships, uh, maintaining grades better than a D in other classes. Those are pretty much the big ones. Professor Bentley lives in Seattle but resides in San Luis Obispo to teach this course. He explains what he gets out of ITP 467. Oh, primarily the relationships that I get out of it. Um, I'd say better than half of the students that take my class keep in regular contact with me after they've graduated. Professor Bentley explains what stage of the process students are on as of week eight. Panic. <laughs> True. Uh, they are in uh, the beginning stages of production and, uh, and sales. So they are, they are in, they're in the panic stage, yes. back to Mustang game day. So I actually got the chance to catch up with some of the players and coaches before practice this week on kind of what they have seen from their season so far and what they hope to continue to see as the season progresses. You know, non-conference was disappointing to say the least, but I think we're hungry and just ready to, to compete and get after it, take it day by day. You know, uh, our motto for conference is just get one day better. You know, non-conference didn't go as, as we Won it. Um, there was a lot of adversity that we dealt with through injury and illness, um, and you know playing a tough schedule. But you know we have a chance to start over. It's a reset button, and anytime you get that, you're excited. Well, now there's a there's like a goal on the line, like Big West. I mean, we want to go for that title, so it's like every night we're gonna have to just play for that, take it one game at a time, one week at a time. You know, my main goal when when I took over this this program was to try and change the psyche of the team. For me, it's trying to teach guys how to compete and teach guys how to win, and that's what our main focus is. We've seen everything, so we've been able to play physical teams, big teams, fast teams, shooting teams, so I think we're ready for what's ever thrown at us. Yeah, this is my, my fifth time going through conference, so I understand like the rigor and, and the seriousness of each game, especially games at home. We really want to try to protect home court. So, you know, my mindset is just, you know, be extra locked in, extra focused. Um, just try to provide my best effort for the team. Well, we, we reset and we go back to trying to set goals, stair-step goals, and um, things that they can, uh, they can achieve that leads to winning. Um, and, and anytime you can set winning goals and, and, and try and focus on them daily, you know, it helps them understand that there's, there's still an opportunity for us to do what we came here for. We're gonna bring toughness, 
and just a level of play that is aggressive, kind of. And I feel like that's going to help us improve. We try and forget the past and uh, focus on the future, you know. All right, and now we have with us Cal Poly men's basketball assistant coach David Hansen. Coach, thanks so much for joining us on set. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So as a former Cal Poly player yourself, how do you kind of think that helps you build a relationship with the current players on the team and kind of relate to them more? Yeah, I think it helps a lot. I think being in, in the position that I'm at, I am in right now, being a former, former student athlete, um, you know, I can relate in a different level. And so the insights that I have academically on the floor, um, I think has really helped our guys a lot. And coach, after losing Donovan Fields last season, how have you seen the team work to kind of fill that hole? Absolutely. I think it's been by committee. I think we've had guys that have stepped up. Our incoming class has been really good, um, our two younger freshmen. But I think everyone's now stepped into that role just because he was able to score the basketball and he was a center point for us. So I think it's, uh, it's forced guys to get out of their comfort zone, and we've seen that. All right, and I, after talking to Ali and Tuka and Nolan, they talk about how you help the bigs specifically. Um, what have you kind of been noticing out there after Hank's injury? How have you noticed Ali and Tuka stepping up as just the two bigs on the court? Yeah, absolutely. It's a big role to fill, and, and with Nolan and Hank playing limited minutes throughout the year, and Hank's obviously out right now, uh, it's forced them to grow up really quick. And Tuka obviously was here last year, but his growth and development has been pretty good. Um, and then Ollie is a freshman, stepped in, he's shown some bright moments. So I think just kind of throwing them to the fire here in this first year has been really beneficial to them. And tell us, what's the chemistry like between you and the coaches? You've got 15 games under your belt. How do you guys kind of work together? You know, it's been really positive. I think our London trip this past summer really helped accelerate our growth and our relationship um, as a staff. And so it takes time to get to know each other. But um, I think we're in a really good spot right now. We work well together and we complement each other. And, and that's hats off to, to Coach Smith for assembling that. All right. And after the loss to Santa Barbara in the conference opener on Wednesday, we just asked Coach Smith what kind of he what he said in the locker room. But what kind of adjustments are you guys making out on the court to hopefully pick up a win over CSUN tonight? Absolutely. You know, CSUN's a very talented team. Give a lot of credit. They got a really good player. Um, but I think obviously we got to score the basketball more. Um, and we saw that at Santa Barbara. I think our guys maybe played a little tight. And so, uh, you know, just giving them that freedom, that confidence, hey, go out there and play, execute our stuff, and, and have fun. So I think you're going to see that tonight. And you just kind of talked about it a little bit, but the Cal Poly defense has quite a competition tonight. In Lamine Jeanette coming in, averaging a double double, averaging 30 points a game. What's kind of your talk to the defense and what they kind of have to expect tonight? Yeah, you know, he's a very good player, and, and we respect everyone, but we fear no one. And so, you know, he's going to score the basketball. He's going to take a lot of shots, so we're not going to hold him to zero points. We know that, but to make it difficult for him um, and make it hard, make him shoot a lot of shots and hopefully miss a lot. So. And, Coach, maybe not the non-conference season you guys were looking for, but now that you guys have entered in conference play, what are your biggest goals for this season? You know, I think just to get better every game. You know, we're in year one right now, so obviously we want to win every game. And it's not acceptable to lose. We know that. Um, but where we're at right now, it's a process. It takes time. And so just to improve every single game in this league, I know from playing in it and being here last year, it's open every year. And so we have an opportunity to come out and, and surprise teams, and I think we will. And what do you think is going to be kind of the biggest challenge for you and the team this year? What is the team, what do you like working on to improve on that maybe it's just not clicking out there on the court? Yeah, you know, I think we've got a lot of new guys. We have a new staff and we're doing a lot of new things. So just being able to be consistent. And I think that's really challenging for a lot of teams. But for us, we've been inconsistent. Guys have been up and down. We've had injuries. So I think moving here in a conference play, if we can establish some type of rotation and be consistent, I think that will bode really well for us. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Coach. Really appreciate having you on set. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more Mustang game day after the break. I got goatee in um, 2011. I got her to clear out my mom's poison oak and weeds. And uh, every time I would leave, she'd cry. And so we have neighbors. We live in the city. And so she would just be like, meh, you know? And I'd be like, well, I can't. I got to take her with me everywhere. So I would take her everywhere, to Trader Joe's, you know, like all around. And I finally took her surfing on my birthday. And it was pretty amazing. Goats have amazing balance. And pretty incredible creatures. And they bring so much joy to everyone. Look at this, you know? So it was just so funny to me. Like, I just never thought I'd have a goat. Like I was gonna return it in like three weeks or I was gonna eat it. And it's like, I just got super attached to it. You know? um, 
they became my friends. I know my purpose is, and, and that's the funny thing about this whole story is, I, I know my purpose is to bring joy to people. I felt like God shared that with me uh, through these experiences. Like, and he, like I can use something as silly as a goat, you know, to bring joy. Welcome back to Mustang Game Day. For those of you just joining us, Cal Poly is taking on CSU Northridge tonight inside Mont Athletic Center. We're a little ways out from tip-off. We're going to talk about some of the key players in the game today for the Mustangs. Up first, we've got Malik Harwell. Malik Harwell, the graduate wing, 6'5", 188 pounds, averaging 9 points a game, 38.1 field goal percentage, and 41 three-point percentage. Kind of has an interesting run so far with the Mustangs. First, he was out for more than half of preseason due to an ankle sprain, then coming back for five games before being out again due to the flu. He played the past four games, started off with zero points in the first two games back. Now he's kind of starting to find his rhythm again with 18 points against Vanguard and then 11 points in the UCSB game. All righty, and next up we've got freshman guard Colby Rogers. Colby Rogers, freshman forward, 6'5", 190 pounds, averaging almost nine points a game, 43 field goal percentage, 37.7 three-point percentage, and scored the team high 16 points versus UCSB. He has averaging 2.7 rebounds, rebounds a game, had only seven points against Vanguard, but then a team high 16 points against UCSB, one of only two players in double digits in that conference opener. He has played in all 15 games for the Mustangs. And our final player is going to be the one and only slow legend, Kyle Colvin. Kyle Colvin, slow legend number 33, redshirt freshman forward, had no points last game, last game against Santa Barbara, but averaging eight points a game, 36.4 field goal percentage and 33 point percentage. 76 free throw percentage, averaging almost five rebounds a game. He had 18 points against Vanguard, but no points against UCSB. Kind of may be the missing puzzle piece for the Mustangs. He has definitely surprised a lot of the fans and definitely a slow legend, that is for sure. We're now gonna take a look at another clip for the, uh, from our Rebuild series um, from the Meet the Coaches episode. Justin Downer, assistant men's basketball coach. Coach Downer, uh, he's very energetic, very energetic, That's <laughs> sometimes way too energetic. Energize the bunny, he has way too much energy. I think he wakes up and just is just ready for the day at 4 a.m. Like, I don't know how he has so much energy, but no, it's great, it's great. Like, we need it sometimes, we need a good kick in the butt. You know, some days, maybe the team doesn't have it, but you can always count on Downer for some energy and, and, and positive talk. I, I've known Coach Smith for about four or five years. I used to coach AU in high school basketball and, and I developed a relationship with Coach Smith through uh, some of the players that he recruited that played for me. And when he got the job, just kind of called me up and asked if I was ready to go and I didn't hesitate. It's just another coach that's young, he's relatable, you know, uh, he, he gets us, he gets what we're going through. Coach Downer's a younger guy so he's another one that relates really well with us. Uh, you can tell he really knows what he's talking about, and he's just fun to be around. We're just trying to get better every day. Um, new program, new system, new coach, new expectations, whatever, whatever they were, they're different now. John Smith, head men's basketball coach. It's not very often you get to play for your uncle or family members such as, such as he, so I really think it's a great experience, and he's always been there around to help me out with basketball and everything, so. Um, being able to play under him, it's a great experience. Very blessed and fortunate that he's, that he's been my coach for the last five years. You know, he's always been there for me uh, whenever I was going through struggles, whether it be on the court, off the court. So having him right there, right down the hall, um, it's been great. Like, he's helped me grow and develop into the player and man that I am right now. So can't take that for granted ever. Keep fighting to get better, okay? We didn't get to everything that we wanted to get to today, but we will continue to chop wood, especially tomorrow. All right, and don't go anywhere. After the break, we have our third and final guest on the show. Stay with us.
every day in my transition is, is always a new day and there's always going to be things that I have to deal with. Being on injections for life kind of sucks. Um, taking pills for life kind of sucks, but um, it's just you have, you have a set of things that you have to do and you just keep going and you keep moving forward. For those who don't know what gender dysphoria is or what it kind of feels like, you're watching your body do these things that you don't like, you don't understand, and you don't realize why it's not matching up with who you are as a person. The important part about it being at our health center, um, even though Planned Parenthood started offering gender affirmative care, is the discreteness of it. It's a health center. You can go there for a variety of issues. Um, it's not like a clinic visit where you don't have to pay a copay on your insurance. You also aren't outed to your parents. If you're doing this because of what you need to do, uh, but your parents may not be supportive, all it shows up is as a health center visit. It's, it's something that's so, so vital to people like me to just have a discreet place that we can get our care and that we don't have to worry about it being r the rug ripped out from under uh, us or, or taken away from us. Um, and we can just continue being. And so having this space on campus now that people can get their care is an incredible accomplishment. All right, and welcome back to Mustang Game Day. We now have our third and final guest on set with us, Cal Poly Radio broadcaster Chris Sylvester. Chris, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Love being on game day. All right, so we're going to go ahead and talk about the UCSB game for a second. The conference opener for the Mustangs kind of working to turn around their non-conference play, and they fell short. It looks like the second half was a little rough there. What did you kind of see out there from the court from the Mustangs? I just think they, they took too much time on offense. I, I think offense has been a real struggle for the team lately. Beginning of the year, I thought that was their strongest point, but uh, the, the passing has to be better. They, they pass the ball around the perimeter too much, shot clock winds down, and last three home games against D1 opponents, they've scored 50 or less, and they've actually slipped to bottom 20 in the country out of 360 D1 teams in scoring. So going up against the bottom 10 defense tonight, hopefully the tables turn for Cal Poly, but the ball movement has to be better, and I think as Nolan Taylor gets healthier, he's expected to play a bit more than he did on Wednesday night here tonight, I think you'll start to see some of the results get better in favor of Cal Poly. And Chris, we just talked to Coach Hansen about this, but after losing Donovan Fields last season, who do you think is a key player on the team who's really going to be able to step up and fill those shoes? Yeah, kind of tough right now to confidently predict that with only one guy averaging double figures scoring. But Junior Ballard, he has the ability to be the guy. I think a lot of it for him is mental right now. He's only scored one point in his last two games, got shut out against UC Santa Barbara. If he can play within the offense a little bit more and get his teammates involved. I think he's a talented enough player where, where he can average close to 15 points per game, but you're absolutely right. I think you can attribute a lot of the offensive struggles to not really having a go-to guy. And Donovan Fields, when his teammates were struggling in years past, he just kind of took over games and kind of put the team on his back and kept them in it. Unfortunately, this year, there hasn't really been a guy to step up and do it, but it's a young team. It's a young team. There aren't many seniors. Maybe you look to a guy like Malik Harwell, who's a grad transfer from Boise State to pick up the slack scoring a little bit. Obviously, we saw on Wednesday, Colby Rogers is a very talented shooter and a very talented scorer. So uh, it'll be interesting to see over these next 15 conference games who kind of separates themselves from the bunch as, as the guy moving forward. Seems to be, unfortunately, kind of an injury-prone team out there on the court. How do you think the loss of Hank Hollingsworth very, very early in the season, how do you think that's kind of affected the team now with freshman Ollie maybe playing way more minutes than expected to as a freshman, with him and Tuca kind of balancing back and forth and balancing those minutes on the court, how do you think that kind of affected the team losing Hank? Yeah, you're talking about a couple of really young guys that haven't had a whole lot of experience in crunch time situations, and so Ollie and... Tuka kind of call it baptism by fire. They, they've kind of just been thrown out there in some tough situations. With Nolan Taylor coming back, obviously he's going to take up some minutes. And I mean, you see his body type. I mean, he's 6'8", 270 pounds, so that might be generous. And, and that's what Cal Poly is missing. They, they need a big, bulky body in the low post. And obviously losing Hank, uh, not only from a, a playing standpoint, but you know, he's a fifth year senior. He's very familiar with his teammates. He's very familiar with Cal Poly, with the opponents here in the Big West. So I, I think that's been a big loss. If he was healthy, would he be a guy leading them in any statistical categories outside of maybe blocks? Probably not, but 
you know, just to have a guy in Hank Hollingsworth, if he was healthy out there for 10, 15 minutes a game, just to be able to give guys like Ollie and Tuka and Nolan Taylor some extra time to rest up and be as energized as possible when they get out on the floor. It's, it's been a big loss for this team, but I'm confident if Nolan Taylor keeps getting healthier, he told me on Wednesday he was 70%. I asked him a couple minutes ago how he's feeling today. He said about 74, 75%. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, it comes down to three games and three days in March to get to the NCAA tournament. Obviously, after seeing what happened last year, it's, it's no guarantee that Cal Poly gets into the Big West tournament, but they want to position themselves to where they're playing their best basketball in March, not necessarily here in early January. And Chris, now looking, taking a look at CSUN's offense, what do you think Cal Poly's going to have to do to defend Lamine Janae? Yeah, I was just talking to assistant coach Justin Downer about that. Uh, there's not a coach in the country that knows how to stop Lamine Janae. You just have to hope to limit Lamine Janae. Certainly one strategy would be going at him as much as possible on offense, trying to get him in some foul trouble and put him on the bench early in the first half and kind of get CSUN out of rhythm. But uh, they're a team accustomed to playing without him. He missed the first 12 games. Um, was suspended and he's come back and he's averaged more than 30 points a game, more than 12 rebounds a game. So he's a special player. I expect Pauly to throw a lot of double teams at him tonight. You just got to make sure that the shooters on the perimeter aren't open. And so it, it's it's a tall task. CSUN has the best scoring offense in the Big West, but they also have the, the worst scoring defense as well. So if Cal Pauly can score and hang with CSUN, I like their chances at home tonight. Keep in mind, last two meetings between these teams, two years ago, double overtime, last year overtime, I think it's going to be close tonight. And Cal Poly had the 33rd toughest non-conference schedule out of all NCAA Division I schools. How do you kind of think that's prepared them coming into the Big West Tournament, the Big West Conference? Yeah, I, I think looking at the matchup the other night, Santa Barbara had like a bottom 30 schedule. So I think Cal Poly, you know, from a standpoint of, of seeing some athletes similar to Lamine Janae, they've, they've already seen guys like that. Out at Iowa, seeing a guy like Luca Garza, Creighton had a great backcourt. San Diego State's undefeated, one of two teams in the country, 360 teams. I mean, that, that, that's a pretty remarkable feat. So um, I, I think it, it puts them in, in a better position to compete with maybe some of these teams that have more talented and, and larger, more physical, athletic players. Uh, the only downside of playing a tough schedule like that when you don't win a lot of games is, is just the, the psychological standpoint of it. You start to lose a lot, and it, it's not the best feeling, obviously. You know, they say losing wouldn't feel so bad if winning didn't feel so good. And so I, I think this game's really important for this team tonight, next three on the road. It, 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 it's as close to a must-win early January game as you're going to find in college basketball. And Cal Poly was picked to finish last in the Big West Conference. Yeah. A lot of the coaches and the players are trying to kind of block out that outside noise. What are your thoughts on this pick? I, that, that shouldn't come as a surprise. You know, if 2-14 and 14 last year in the conference, you bring in a new coach, trying to implement a new system. And obviously, I, I think the, the folks that had picked them to finish last are pre feeling pretty good about themselves right now, seeing what this team's done through 15 games. That being said, the conference is as wide open as it's ever been this year. UC Irvine, no question, they were head and shoulders above everybody else last year. Irvine, 8-8. Eight and eight thus far this season. They've had some bad losses. Santa Barbara, they haven't really played anybody all that great yet. I'm interested to see how they fare against some tougher competition. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not surprised that they were picked to finish last, but I would be surprised if they did finish last. And what do you think, you talk about how the conference is so wide open this year, what do you think Cal Poly needs to bring offensively and defensively out there on the court to compete and maybe make that Big West tournament? Yeah, I think we've seen a couple different Cal Poly teams, maybe even more than a couple different Cal Poly teams this year. We saw a team through November that could shoot 50% for an entire game, knock down 10 threes and score 70 plus points. Cal Poly's 0-10 this year when they don't reach 70 points. They're 3-2 when they get past 70 points. In today's day and age of college basketball, you have to be scoring 70 points unless you're Virginia. You know, Virginia does it much differently, but uh, Cal, Cal Poly just, it has to score. It starts with their offense. It, it's, an, it's an offensive game. That's what the fans want to see. Fans want to see three-pointers and dunks and points. It's not so much about defense. And Cal Poly, like I said, implementing a new system. John Smith trying to get his guys in here. Um, it, it's a process. It's not a surprise to see that they've kind of been inconsistent thus far. I'd just like to see some more fluidity on the offensive end. And hopefully against the bottom 10 defense in the country tonight, you get some results. And for you as a play-by-play -play broadcaster, your office is here inside Mott Athletic Center. What does it feel like for you, like when you see Mott Magic, how do you think that impacts the team's play? Well, I wish I had an office in here. That would, that would, that would make life a lot easier. But um, 
Uh, you know, it, it's it's a special place. Just thinking, you know, this is my fourth year here, so like, just thinking about some of the crazy memories. Of course, like that Santa Barbara game is the first thing that comes to mind two years ago when they were down 23 to two. But I think of the CSUN game two years ago. It was Victor Joseph and, and some other seniors their, their final game in here, and and Vic hit a buzzer beater at the end of overtime to send it to double overtime. And you know, Donovan Fields had some big shots in that game. I think Cal Poly erased a big deficit. So. Uh, Never count out the Mustangs in between these walls. You know, they, they could be down 20 in the first half. I'm not mentally thinking it's over just yet until I see that final buzzer. So, uh, Mott's a special place. Cal Poly was 1-7 in, in here against Big West competition last year. They won't finish higher than ninth if they don't win more than one home game. It's really important to defend your home court, especially in this conference. And, really important tonight. Like I said, it feels like a must-win game. I mean, the season's not over by any means if they don't win tonight, but the challenge of getting to the Big West Tournament is that much greater if they don't get the job done tonight. Well, Chris, we love having you on the show. Thank you so Do much for being here. Do I take up a lot of air time? <laughs> in a good perfect. way. In a good okay, way. Okay, all right. um, we'll be right back. We have more Mustang game day for you right after the break. Escapes Climbing Park where students of all skill levels can try their hand at rock climbing. I think climbing is kind of like a puzzle, so it's fun to solve. It's like a puzzle that involves physical activity, which I got, I don't know, I think that's like super compelling and it makes the sport a little more interesting. When you start a route and you like can't get through it, it's really frustrating at first, but then when you finally get to the top, you get this like crazy feeling of satisfaction that's just like above anything else. Some students utilize the climbing park to take their minds off the stress of classes. I've always loved like climbing things. You get a break from solving problems with your mind. You get to solve problems with your body now, and it's a good exercise and it's something to something to do that I enjoy doing while I'm here on campus. So, if you've never been rock climbing, no need to worry. Everybody can start somewhere. Like I am also pretty new to the sport, but like. There's always like beginner roots and it's like a really satisfying thing to start and like see yourself improving with, so. The park is free to use for all students registered at the rec. Polyscapes also offers free rental equipment such as shoes and harnesses for use on both the bouldering and rock climbing walls. This has been Brady Kasky reporting for Mustang News. Welcome back to Mustang Game Day. Now we're going to take a look at our three keys for success for the Mustangs for their game tonight. Up first, we have play in the paint. Right, play in the paint. Cal Poly shot 22% from the field in the second half against Santa Barbara, going 5 for 22. Santa Barbara actually doubled their points in the paint, 28 to 14. And then on the other side of playing in the paint, the rebounding, something Coach Smith has been talking to us about all season. Currently averaging 31 total rebounds, both offensively and defensively, but averaging an av but allowing an average of 31 rebounds a game. And then taking a look at number two, we've got lockdown defense. Lockdown defense, it's all going to come down tonight to Lamine Genet, the guy we've kind of been talking about all show. He's currently averaging a double-double, averaging 30 points, averaging over 12 rebounds. He has only played in four games, so granted his averages might be a little off as compared to some of the other players who have played in all 15 or 16 games. But lockdown defense against him and against the whole team in general, as Chris was saying, CSUN's defense might not be up to par, but it's their offense that's going to that could get them this W. So it's Cal Poly's lockdown defense is going to be our second key to success. And then our final key, we have bounce back. Right, and this key comes mainly from the loss to Santa Barbara, which Chris was just mentioning. This may not be a must-win game, but it is a must-win game for the, for the Mustangs. And Coach Smith is always talking about changing the psyche around this program, the psyche of the players. And when you go 3-11 and in non-conference, you come into conference against your rival. And a blue-green game to start conference is always tough. And it was here inside Mott Athletic Center, and they dropped that game. So coming into their second home game, in Side Mod Athletic Center to start off conference play. They're going to need to pick up this win. They're going to need to bounce back from that loss to Santa Barbara. They could potentially be down this game. That's a lot of locker room talk from Coach Smith is, we're going to be down, we're going to be up. There's going to be a lot a lot of fluctuation in this, and we need to succeed, and we need to fail all at the right at the right pace. So I think bouncing back from that loss against Santa Barbara is going to be the final key to success in this game. And with Cal Poly having the 33rd hardest 
schedule for non-conference play. You heard it from John Smith. They're talking about blocking out that outside noise. So they're really going to try and bounce back from that. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and take a look at the standings so far in the Big West Conference. Not much to go by, but there has been a total of two games. Cal Poly losing to UC Santa Barbara on Wednesday and CSUN defeating Long Beach State on Wednesday. So CSUN going into this game 1-0, Cal Poly going in 0-1-1. But as I said, there's been one game in the conference so far, so who really knows what is to expect. Well, that is all we have for you for this Mustang game day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tune in on January 30th for our next game day for men's basketball. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Sydney Finkel. And I'm Sam Spitz. We'll see you next time.